Uh, okay, so I'm Michael Hall, a local developer here in Asheville. Um, I guess most of the work I do these days is WordPress, although a lot of what I'm going to talk about is sort of approaching um, coding and I guess in particular PHP from the standpoint of someone um, who didn't, who sort of learned that stuff before WordPress um, and had to sort of figure out what's the optimal way to do stuff in WordPress. Um, and really the heart of what I want to talk about is this whole process of generalization. Um, I come from a math background and so this is like, this is really what inspires me to like work harder work longer, work more, you know, to make your stuff not just apply to your one immediate situation, but make your solutions apply to like a wider class of stuff. Um, so I would kind of define this process as saying, you know, you start with one or more known facts or solutions. Um, use and expand on these together and classify a wider variety of facts and solutions and then repeat. Um, so that's a real basic breakdown of this process, which for me carries over from studying math. Um, a lot of things between math and computer programming are so similar that, you know, it's, it's all pretty applicable. And I have a disclaimer here. Um, due to excessive study of mathematics, um, this speaker is trained and equipped to use the above process thoroughly. And actually, I'm just going to level with you. So this is actually a confession, not a disclaimer. Um, due to excessive study of mathematics, this speaker is obsessed with and addicted to using the above process constantly. Um, so that's, you know, that's my motivation for this talk. Like, that's what I love to do. That's what motivates me. Um, if I build something and I'd use it one time, I'm a little bit disappointed if I can't like pick it up and use it again for a different project. Um, so a quick example, uh, non-WordPress related right now. Um, this guy, anybody know who this guy is? Here's a hint, it's not me wearing a robe and a headband. <laughs> Don't think it's Shakespeare. No, it's... Um, is an ancient Greek mathematician called Euclid. Um, so this guy was around in like 300 BC and he's kind of my hero. Uh, he didn't do any computer programming obviously, but he probably could have if it existed back then. Um, and I don't know, this guy just sort of interests me to no end. Um, basically he compiled a 13 volume geometry book, which is actually like still kind of the heart of the geometry that we learn or try to learn in like middle school and high school, right? And he put all this stuff together back in like 300 BC. Um, so he basically started with real simple assumptions and said, all right, here's the definitions I'm going to use. Here's the assumptions I'm going to base everything on. I'm not going to prove them because they're assumptions. I'm assuming they're true. And from that little seed, he started to prove one thing. And then he used that thing to prove another thing. And he used those two things to prove more stuff. And he ended up with this 13 volume book um, that is still really influential like 2000 something years later because it was just put together so well. Um, and so kind of an idea from his book um, that I guess um, I can sort of take a little bit further um, there's this idea, how many people know about the Pythagorean theorem? You probably did not expect to hear that today, right? Um, who can like state a version of it? Okay, so what, what's the context there? Yeah, so we're talking about a right triangle. Let me just give you one. There it is. Um, right, so we all kind of probably remember this, at least seeing it at some point. So if you know A and B and you're trying to find C, um, C would be the hypotenuse there. Pretty simple and easy formula. That's not actually C, but you can just take the square root and you got your answer. Um, so, you know, think about this for a second. This is like one specific triangle or type of triangle, right? The thing that this hinges on is you have to have a 90 degree angle right here. If you don't, well, you can't really use this formula. So what I'm trying to get at is, um, 
maybe how could we take this one known fact and like generalize it to like speak to more triangles and tell us stuff about different triangles. So here's sort of a, a different triangle. Um, notice we don't have a right triangle anymore. We just have, this is a letter theta. Um, so we have the angle theta. And we, it's the exact same thing, except it's no longer 90 degrees, right? Um, so you might say, well, it worked before, why wouldn't it work again, right? Um, turns out not to be true, but um, all you have to do is tag on this little extra little piece. And what I'm about to show you next basically it took, I don't know, maybe 3,000 something years to evolve from triangle one to triangle two, right? So you take basically what is the Pythagorean theorem and you just have this other little piece. Um, just simply subtract two AB times cosine theta. Um, so, you know, what my point is here is basically, this is way better because it talks about all triangles, right? This is cool, but not as cool because it only talks about one particular type of triangle. So um, what you're probably wondering now, I'm sure, is, hey, I thought this was about WordPress. <laughs> Why are we looking at triangles? Um, but that, that little, tiny little example is kind of like most of the work that I do is revolving around that same idea. You know, let's take one particular thing and let's figure out it's going to take more work. Hopefully it won't take 3,000 years, but it's going to take more work. Let's just figure out how we can take this and like make it better so that it applies to more cases. Um, and that's really kind of the thing at the core of when I'm doing development. It's what I'm always thinking about. Um, so really, the way I relate this to WordPress, you can think of a child theme as like one specific case, right? Um, that's not absolutely true, but usually when you have a child theme, um, you're kind of just using it on one site. Again, that's not always true, but more or less, in my experience, that's usually what I'm doing. Um, so when I first started working in WordPress, um, I have learned about child themes and saw that there was this functions.php where you can put all your code in there and it just kind of magically gets read in by the system. And it's great. You can just put your PHP in and just go. Um, I guess what I ended up doing was I would have stuff that was really specific to that site and then mixed in with some other stuff that I might want to like transport to a different site. And I would end up with this mix of code there's like some of it I could like chunk out and use on a different site, but it was always this process of how do I like pick that functionality up and move it. Um, so from child themes, I went on to learn about making plugins. And um, really you can think of a plugin as just, it's a generalized solution, right? It's kind of, it, it harnesses that idea of generalization where it's not just applying to a specific case anymore. If you have a plugin, you ought to be able to just put that on any site whatsoever and it should work the same, ideally, as it does on any other site. Um, so a lot of what I'm gonna be talking about today is um, you know, taking some stuff that you might be tempted to put in your child theme and really think about um, could I potentially make a plugin out of this um, by the way, when I say plugin, I'm not necessarily talking about registering your plugin with WordPress. Um, there is a process to do that, but in case you didn't know, um, you can pretty much just make a file on your computer or on your server or whatever, and it's a plugin. You don't have to like get it approved or registered. You can just go ahead and make it um, and start using it yourself, which is a really cool thing. Um, like I said, generalizing is way easier said than done. I can't tell you how many times I've done something specific on one site and then been like, cool, I want to reuse this. And then, oh, well, this site's different. So I have to like, you know, make it, I don't want to break it to where it doesn't work on the old site anymore, right? So you have to keep that working and then also make it work on this new site at the same time. And so you really do get into this mode of you know, I can't think too much about the specific site I'm using this on. I have to think big, like, let's just pretend that this could be on any arbitrary given site at any time. And so that really um, sort of helps you think a little bit deeper about the coding that you're doing. 
Um, and like I said, the triangle example is a real good example because it took like 3,000 years to get from specific to like a general solution. Um, so what I'm basically going to do sort of like a case study here and I'm going to, um, it's not going to be super, super, super realistic. It'll be pretty realistic, I guess. Um, we're going to be mimicking some aspects here and there. Um, but the task that I came up with for this talk is um, essentially building like a social sharing icon set. Like you've probably all seen sites where you get to the end of a post and it's like share this with your friends. Um, so there's plenty of plugins out there that do this. I'm not trying to build another one. I'm not going to build another one. This is kind of just mimicking that idea just to use it as an example. Um, so it's not going to be like a true social sharing plugin that works. Um, we're just going to try to mimic um, the process of how you might migrate that from your theme to a plugin. Um, so the tools we're going to be using are HTML and CSS. Um, we're going to use JavaScript and also a little bit of jQuery because I want to talk about how um, you know dependencies and stuff can be handled when you're dealing with uh, JavaScript files in WordPress. Um, obviously PHP since we're in WordPress and then to handle the icons themselves, I'm going to be using Font Awesome, which if you haven't heard of that, is a really cool thing. Um, it's basically a huge icon set that's not image-based. It's kind of like text-based, so it's not very expensive on your page load. Um, and then what I'm going to do is, you know, I put a lot of thought into what should this child thing be like that we're going to start with. And I kind of wanted to mess it up and make it like not very good, right? Because there's, there's just a lot of things that I learned as I went in WordPress and I was doing things a really bad way. Um, and then I learned like, oh yeah, you shouldn't do stuff that way. Try doing this instead. And so I kind of want to point out some of those things that I did and that I learned were actually not that good. Um, just in case um, somebody might be doing the same things. Um, so the child theme itself is going to be just a 2015 child theme. Um, what's this here? TYCP. Well, it's the name of this talk. Turn your code into a plugin. So why why would I like use that? Super crucial in the theme folder name. But um, this we'll come back to later when we start looking at um, files and stuff. So obviously style.css and functions.php. Two files that are in almost every child theme, I guess. Um, those are the two files that if you go, like you're trying to do something on WordPress that you don't know how to, and you Google, maybe you find a forum post or something, you know, there will always be a discussion like, oh, we'll just add this filter in or whatever. And then almost without fail, the original poster will say, okay, well, that's great, but where do I put that code? And usually they're like, this might be a dumb question, but where do I put that code? And almost without fail, it's going to be in one of these two files. Um, and I think my personal opinion is just because those are the two files that almost everybody has, right? So that's just kind of the common files that things get dumped into a lot of times. Um, I'm going to throw in a header.php, and that's an example of something that is not really ideal. So I'm going to kind of use it for a not so good reason, just as an example of maybe what not to do. Um, and then I did want to have some JavaScript in there, so I'll have like one JavaScript file. It kind of handles the, the mimicking of the sharing uh, capability there. Um, and then I guess before we really dig into some of the coding, the goals that I'm going for is really just to um, take that sharing icon functionality and just pick it up from the child theme and move it to a plugin, right? If you do that once, then you're pretty much set. You don't have to do that every time you want to, you know, use this sharing functionality on a different site. You could just grab the plugin folder, throw it in your plugins folder and go. Um, and so again, that's really kind of what the main point of this talk is. Um, of course, we want to make sure not to like pick up any of the pieces of the child theme that have nothing to do with our um, sharing icons. Um, so we want to leave the non-related stuff intact 
and really look at what are we picking up and moving and what needs to stay in our child theme. Um, and then also like any little gotchas that might come up as we're doing this. Um, and really quick, I, I am going to have some code up here on the screen. So if you're like on your laptop or something, I have two uh, GitHub repositories that basically are holding the, the code that I'm going to be working with. Um, and so this is the child theme that we're going to start with at the top. And then eventually we're going to end up with this plugin. Um, so if you're if you're really wondering like how do I make my own plugin or you know if you want to look deeper into what we're talking about you can always just kind of clone these now or later whenever I'll leave them up there indefinitely. Um, but if you wanted to follow along now if if you can't read that you could certainly just clone um, those right now. And my um, slides here if you wanted to find those there's the address. Um, so. I'm pretty much ready to go ahead and just start digging into a little bit of code. Does anybody have questions before we do that? Okay. Well, let's go ahead and do that. All right. So I have. Um, Basically, I'm running um, a test site on MAMP. So this is all going to be kind of locally done here. Um, you can see my themes folder. Um, I've got my 2015 theme and then my child theme here. And if we open that up, you can kind of see all those different files. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and open up this um, theme folder and text wrangler with my magic command open says me um, opens up basically the current folder in a text wrangler window just a little shortcut that I wanted to define and I guess I didn't have text wrangler open so it might be taking a while Open now. All right, I was about to have to do it the long way. Um, that's good. So here's our here's our child theme. We have a functions.php. We have a style.css. Um, we've got a header.php, and then just a real quick, um, real small JavaScript file. And the site that I'm um, working on here is just. You can obviously tell us 2015 child theme. Um, really quick, let me ask you guys this. What, um, here's sort of the social sharing icons that I made here. Um, they do, I'm sort of filtering on the content. So if I go to basically any post, I'll see those icons. Um, if this were a real world sharing plugin, you probably want some options as far as what pages does this show up on and all that kind of stuff. But again, this is just sort of a quick example. Um, but this will um, put those icons after every single post. Um, so what's kind of like the one thing maybe if you know 2015, what's the, what is it about this theme other than the sharing icons that's different? Kind of small, but it should jump out. Really, it's just the um, these guys, link colors and header color. So I wanted to have those in there. Again, it's kind of a trivial example, but I wanted an example of something in the child theme that was not related to the sharing icons, right? Because we don't just want to pick everything up and move it into a plugin. We just want to pick the sharing stuff up and move that. Um, so our, our child theme is still going to contain all this green stuff, um, but our sharing icons are going to be sort of picked up and moved over to the plugin. Um, so in the, the style.css file, um, you can you kind of have all these headers, which hopefully if you've 
made a child theme before you're familiar with, you have to tell it um, what's your theme name, right? And that shows up over here. Um, my 2015 child theme, right? That's just the name that I'm defining. And all that stuff happens in the um, style.css file. So when we get to making a plugin, you're going to see um, it's really pretty similar. Um, the description here says a child theme that probably contains enough custom functionality to warrant a plugin. Um, and so if you kind of click on the theme here, again, just the fact that I have that in my style.css file, that's making the description here um, on the child theme page. So again, I'm mentioning this because when we build our plugin, it's going to work in a real similar way. Um, so what we can do here, by the way, this, um, this is not really the ideal way anymore um, to NQ your parent style. Um, but I don't know, I kind of just left it like that because again, this is supposed to be a child theme that's not really ideal at all. So I'm trying to point out like kind of some common things here. So we'll come back to that in just a little bit. Um, the main thing here that's not quite right about this child theme is what's in this header.php file, right? So um, if I look through here, this is the kind of thing that I do if I'm like forced to edit a file that I really don't think I should be, or like I don't want to edit a file, but I don't really have any other choice. Especially if I'm working with other people on a project um, and it's not under version control and stuff like that, I'll just sort of make this little note like, hey, M. Hall, that's my first initial and my last name. Hey, I edited this little part right here, right? And then I close it with this. So I used to do this stuff all the time. Um, a lot of times when I shouldn't have been doing it really, but I, you know, I was kind of in a learning process there. Um, but what's going on here? This is really not an ideal way, right? We don't really want to just hack into the head of our child theme. Um, what is maybe like a better way to do this? There's one word that starts with an E. Anybody know? NQ. NQ. Yeah, we want to NQ our CSS and our JavaScript. Um, and so this is the kind of stuff that I was just doing all the time because I didn't know WordPress and I didn't really know any better. Um, and I'm hoping that there's at least one person who sort of might be in that same ballpark where they might be doing similar stuff. Um, so we're definitely going to fix that up. And in fact, once we NQ our scripts properly, we can actually just get rid of this header.php altogether. It really doesn't even need to be in our child theme. Um, so that's going to help to sort of clean stuff up a little bit. Um, if we take a look real quick at this JavaScript file, it's really not doing a whole lot. But again, I did want to at least use a, um, you know, a JavaScript file and sort of make it dependent on jQuery, even though um, if you look at the code, well, it really doesn't need to be dependent on jQuery. You could do it real easily without jQuery. Um, as far as how this works, again, I'm sort of mimicking this functionality. So all that my plugin is going to do here is um, when you click on one of these, instead of going to all these services and finding the right code to sort of make the dialog box pop up to share, um, what I did was I just um, insert this little text at the bottom, sharing is caring. Um, and so that's going to just mimic again, like popping up. Like I said, I didn't want to remake a social sharing icons plugin because there's a bunch of good ones out there. Um, so that's not really the point. Um, essentially what this is, is it's going to be mimicking um, what this functionality is doing. Um, so you can just kind of hit that all day and it'll, it'll just put a new um, sharing is caring at the bottom. And if we just reload the page, it should all go away. Um, so the first thing, I mean, really one reason why WordPress has its own enqueuing system is if we just kind of take this chunk right here, oops. And let's say that we are just kind of messing around with where we should put that. And we put it um, above WP head, all right? That's going to cause some problems. Um, let me just open up my console. Does anybody know um, right off the bat what problem is that going to cause? 
Okay, well, let's just see. So I want to open up my console here and just reload. Yeah, it's above the head section. So what am I getting there? Um, jQuery is not defined. Well, what does that mean? Well, basically it just means my JavaScript file, um, which is being loaded right here, is trying to use jQuery. But jQuery hasn't been loaded by WordPress yet, right? Because it does that on this WP head call. Um, so if you, you know, this, this method of like sticking your scripts and your style sheets directly in the head is pretty temperamental um, because you can put it in the wrong place really easily. And again, if you're making a plugin, you don't have access to the person's like header.php file. You just can't edit that. So we really need a way to get our style sheets and our uh, JavaScripts loaded without like hacking in to the header of our parent theme. Um, so we're going to um, basically handle that in just a second. But again, this whole dependency on jQuery is just kind of one of the many things that you'll, you'll come up against. Um, and that's really it. So at this point, I guess that's a good review of the child theme. We're going to go ahead and make our plugin now. Um, did anybody have questions at this point as far as how this child theme is set up? Um, maybe why some of those things were bad to do, anything like that. Hopefully that all made sense. Okay. Um, so let's just look at how we can actually make a plugin. And if you've never made one before, um, it's probably a lot easier than you think it's going to be. Um, Okay, so I'm going to go back up out of my themes folder for now and into my plugins folder. There's nothing in there, which is fine. If we go over to the um, site here, we can go to plugins. And no plugins available, though which is fine. There's no plugins in the system yet. Um, so I just want to make sure that this error got cleared up once I moved my JavaScript back. And I guess I didn't save that or something. Um, what file was that in? There we go. So I, I neglected to save when I moved this back down. So what is kind of, if I'm making a plugin, does anybody know what's sort of the first thing I should do on my computer if I want to make a plugin? Well, a good place to start is um, just go ahead and create a folder, right? And we want to make it right here in this plugins folder. And I'm just going to call this um, TYCP, turn your code into a plugin dash plugin example. Um, you can call yours anything you want. Uh, preferably don't use a folder name that is already belonging to a plugin in the WordPress.org repository. Um, and essentially what I need is just like one, one file. It's really all I need. You don't actually even need a folder, you just need a file. But we're going to make a folder because we're going to have multiple um, files in our plugin. So here we are in the uh, plugin folder. And all I'm going to do is just make a PHP file with the same name as my folder. It doesn't have to be the same name, but it's usually a good idea. So I'm going um, to create a file. And I want to um, just create a file called tycp plugin examplephp um, And then I'm going to open this guy in Text Wrangler 2. So there's only one file in here, but we will have more. Um, usually, when I'm like first starting a plugin, 
what I'll do is I'll just Google. Um, it used to be in the codex, actually. Um, just this morning, though, I noticed for the first time, I don't know if anybody else has, but if you Google like how to make a um, WordPress plugin, um, this page right here in the codex has a lot of good info in it. Um, I'm about 99% sure that this page used to have like the header that you need to put in your file. But literally, like just this morning, I was looking and it wasn't in there. Um, so I'm really glad that I caught that. But it's actually, let's see, it's on one of these. Um, and essentially, we just, there's like a big chunk that we need to copy and paste. Um, so what we're really looking for is the header. And WordPress gives you this example of like what kind of header could you have in your plugin. Um, so this is really it. To make a plugin, it's as easy as having a file. Um, and again, this is where it's really similar to a child theme. You just sort of um, notice that this whole chunk of code is actually not really doing anything as far as PHP is concerned. It's all in a comment. Right? You see like the little slash star at the beginning and end? Well, that's just a comment. So we're not really executing any code. We're just kind of using WordPress's format that it knows how to read. Um, so I'm just going to call this um, sharing icons plugin. Um, you can literally call it whatever you want. This plugin doesn't have its own web page, so I'm not going to uh, fill that out. Um, the description adds social sharing icons after post content. It's always good to give your users a, a description. So just for the sake of thoroughness, I'm going to say on all pages. If you're making a plugin, you should really communicate to the user what they can expect. And so they might see that and say, well, I don't want it on all pages. I want to go find another one. You're kind of doing them a service because they don't have to take the time to install your plugin, check it out, see if it does what they want, and move on. So use that description to kind of tell them um, what they can expect. Um, version, I, I'm not really sure if you even have to have that. I don't think that you do. Um, but all this stuff I'm filling out, most of it's optional. Some people are probably going to fuss at me for removing these two. These are what handles like the translation stuff. Um, into different languages, but I'm essentially for now just going to ignore those because it's not really even a real sharing plugin. Um, but this is where the cool part comes in. So just doing that, which is essentially doing nothing in, in a sense, there's no PHP code being executed, it's just a comment. Um, I can then go to my plugins page and reload. And all of a sudden, hey, I have a plugin. Um, so it really is just that easy. You put a little block of comments in a folder um, or in just a file. Put that file or folder inside your WP content slash plugins folder, and you've got a plugin. Um, so that's pretty cool. And you can go ahead and activate it. It's not really, again, it's literally doing nothing. So this is kind of like the most basic plugin you can have. It's like the Seinfeld of plugins, right? A plugin that does nothing. Um, so let's go ahead and make it do something. Um, I'm going to go ahead and copy, essentially copy this stuff. And at this point, um, I guess I'll go ahead and not just copy, but I'm going to cut this out of the functions file. Okay. So if you're curious about what that code is doing, like by all means, ask me about it. Um, after I know it, it can sometimes be hard to read on the screen. So again, you can clone all that. This examples from GitHub, or just ask me after. Um, so there's all the code that's um, doing the icons. So again, here's our, and I want to. This is where it does become important. Um, I just moved this from a child theme to a plugin, right? So this is no longer something that's. I can really consider just on my site. Now it's potentially on anybody's site that has this plugin, and that's important. 
Um, so why do we put these TYCP underscore, right? Um, if I were writing um, 30 functions for this plugin, I'd put that in front of every single one of them. Um, I used to think that that was kind of dumb when I would see that on forum posts until I understood why you do that. Um, so why do we do that? Anybody? Avoid conflicts with other functions. Yeah, if you define a if you define a function twice, then PHP just decides it's going to give up, um, usually, I guess, depending on your PHP version. But like, let's say that we, just to show you an example, let's, um, well, first of all, let's make sure that this um, is going to let us, um, nope, and it didn't like that. So let's see, did I, um, I might have forgotten to save that functions file. See what that says. Hmm. Uh, I think it doesn't like the fact that this file. Let's actually go ahead and just remove that functions. Um. So I'm just going to take my functions.php out. I think what it didn't like was the fact that there was just a PHP tag and no white space after that. I can kill your site. So I just removed, um, if we look at my child theme on the left, there's no functions file anymore. Um, so if I reload this, hopefully it'll come back, and it does. Um, so at this point, I guess just to kind of demonstrate a proof of concept here, um, why do we need this underscore? I mean, TYCP underscore. That probably is the most important thing to do when you're making a plugin, um, because if if you make a plugin and another plugin developer has their plugin and you call a function the same name, then the entire WordPress site is just going to be white screen. It just dies. So that's why you'll always see these little like um, underscore prefixes on all these plugin functions. And just to kind of prove that. Um, What's a WordPress function, um, anybody? Just name a WordPress function. So let's try to create a function called get posts. And let's just not really have it do anything, but it'll just be a function um, that does nothing. Yeah, so it doesn't like that. I tried to redefine an existing function, and it said, no, you functions with the same name. I'm just going to give up and not do anything. Um, so that's why we always have to use these little underscore um, with our function names. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and get rid of this here. So really, um, I guess if I, if I reload the front end, I'd be curious to kind of see what, what it looks like since um, part of our functionality is now in the child theme and part of it is in the plugin, all right? So, Let's see if that breaks anything. Nope, it doesn't really have a problem with that. Um, of course, if this was any other site than mine, it would look weird because you'd be missing stuff. Um, but let's go ahead and kind of just yank out all this stuff. And by the way, you, you see that prefix everywhere. Um, like I've got a div called tycp-share-links. Um, and you know I'm really careful to add that prefix almost everywhere, because in my plugin, if I make a div that's just called share links, well maybe someone else also has that div in their plugin, and then I could define styles for mine, which would also inadvertently change styling on the other div with the same name. So I guess I can't really say it enough just to kind of like when in doubt, put that prefix everywhere you possibly can. Um, so what I'm going to do now is um, I cut those styles out of um, the style sheet, and I'm going to paste them into my plugin somewhere. Um, let's see. So if I go back here and here. 
So here's my plugin folder. Again, it's pretty basic. So what I'm going to do is I want to make a directory called CSS, and I'm going to make a directory called JavaScript, or just JS. So that created two directories. Um, and inside my CSS, again, probably not necessary, but um, just kind of get in the habit of using initials, and um, you end up putting them everywhere. So if we go back into our uh, text editor now, um, we'll see this CSS file. And I'm just going to dump my, my CSS in there and save. Um, at this point, we should see some stuff broken. Yep, so that's kind of like what the ordered list looks like without any styling. So why is there no styling? I, I moved it from the style sheet in my theme to my plugin, but it's still, it's not getting loaded, right? So I actually need to, within my plugin, I need to say, hey, I created this style sheet. Um, go ahead and load that style sheet. So if you're not familiar with the NQ uh, process for WordPress, um, there is an action called WPNQ scripts. And what that does, it basically allows you to hook into this process and do your own stuff whenever this, whenever WordPress calls the, the process there. So it's, this is going to fire um, on the front end on every page load. And what I can tell it to do with my second argument is just um, to call a function that I'm going to define, and I'm going to call it um, TYCP underscore um, NQ. Right? So this is kind of like the NQ function for my plugin. And what I'm going to tell it to do first is to NQ a style. And I have to give it sort of like a handle. So I'm just going to say something real basic. And then the next thing I have to do is to tell it um, basically where can this file be found. And again, this is where it's tougher to do when you're trying to generalize things. Um, but if we look in the child theme, right, this was like the bad way to load our style sheet. And um, Let's see. Oh, actually, it was it was in this style.css file. Um, but what I can do, and this is going to be bad, so just watch and see if you can tell me why this is bad. So the the URL for my style sheet is slash wp content slash plugins slash turn your code into a plugin example slash. All right, that's a lot of typing, but literally, like that will work. It's not a good idea, but it will work um, as long as all my typing was correct. So let's see if that did the trick. Oh, it says it didn't work. Oh, I forgot the CSS folder. All right, so while this is loading, why is it a bad idea to put that absolute path, or it really wasn't absolute, but why is it to put that explicit path in there? Like, I mean, it probably will work on some sites. It's not going to work on all. Have you ever seen a site that's, like, installed in a subdirectory? So you have, like, .com slash blog slash whatever. Well, on those kind of sites, this isn't going to work because look how we're calling this um, path. It starts with slash WP content, so that'll go to the root and then slash WP content. So this is where we get to a difficult case, really, um, if you're not familiar with it. Like, how do we account for that? How do we tell it, hey, no matter what the folder is, just kind of go to the uh, plugins directory there. Um, and so I kind of have a little cheat sheet here that I do. I have this command called uh, plug paths. Uh, that means nothing to you, I'm aware. I made it up myself. But um, I basically am going to pass in my, um, my prefix, TYCP, and hit enter. 
Um, and I'm actually just going to um, paste this. So it pasted it to my clipboard, um, hopefully. Oops, I actually wanted to copy, not paste. Um, so when I get, um, basically, whenever I first create a plugin, I always add these two functions at the bottom. And what this is doing is I'm defining a function that's just my initials underscore URL. And that's going to always return me the URL of my plugin folder, no matter what subfolder I'm in. I can always call this, and I know that I have the URL of my plugin. And that's extremely helpful because it lets you get around subdirectory installations and all kinds of other stuff. Um, if you want to know about what this is actually doing, um, you can ask later. I'm not sure if we're going to have time to go too deep into those. But the point is, when you're in the world of plugins, um, again, it's tougher, right? It took 3,000 years <laughs> to generalize that one triangle example. Um, it can take a long time to generalize stuff um, with PHP and WordPress as well. Um, so at this point, I can just call the URL function and say, hey, give me the URL, but also append um, not WP content, basically inside my um, plugin folder. And I'm just going to say slash CSS and then my file name. So notice I'm kind of skating around that, that issue here. Like I don't have to say slash WP content. I can just define a function that gives me that and use it anytime I want. Um, so if I reload that's going to be fine. Um, so as far as the JavaScript, if we look back into this header.php, which was not ideal, right? we have this JavaScript file, which is dependent on jQuery. Um, we saw that it broke if we moved it up here. So we're basically going to take that same um, concept. And, and actually, I'm going to enqueue also this um, font awesome. Um, CSS file while I'm here. And this one doesn't actually need to call my plugin URL um, because it's reaching out to uh, CDN. So you can just do that. And I want to go ahead and get these things all out of the header. Um, like so. Um, so at this point, and again, this is a great moment when you're dealing with child themes. Um, when you realize, like, oh, hey, I don't need the header file in my child theme anymore. I can just get rid of it. That's always a great thing. You're, like, shedding some stuff that you really didn't need. You're kind of... Um, losing weight in some sense. Um, so at that point, you know, you can just basically um, take out the header file. And I don't think our JavaScript's going to work anymore um, because that code hasn't been loaded. So you can see I'm, I'm clicking, but I'm not getting the um, sharing text down there. Um, so I guess there's, there is a difference here. Um, what we're doing here is enqueuing styles. There's also a function called script, And again, you just sort of pass it a handle. And you tell it where to find the file. Um, right, which we haven't created yet. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. And essentially what I'm going to do, I guess I could have just copied the whole file, but um, I'm basically going to paste all that stuff into a JavaScript file, which now is living in my plugins folder um, and should be getting enqueued um, using this command here. Um, and I am missing one piece there, so let's just kind of see what happens. It's going to probably work, but not really. Again, 
same issue, jQuery is not defined, right? So we saw that when we were hacking into the header file like we were not really supposed to. If you put that script above WP head, you get this jQuery error because jQuery hadn't been loaded yet. Um, so this whole NQ process is really good as far as, you know, you can just tell it, hey, what scripts does this depend on? Um, in our case, it just depends on jQuery. I think you still have to uh, pass it an array. So this is basically telling WordPress, like, hey, don't load this file until jQuery has already been in Q and um, I can make calls to jQuery that way. Um, so now if I click on it, everything's working. And if you look at, um, I guess, these two folders here, um, here's my plugin folder, which now pretty much everything we had going in that child theme um, has been moved over. All right, I still have a style.css, but it really doesn't have anything other than um, some header and widget stuff, right? That's the green text that we were talking about earlier. That's fine. You wouldn't want to make everybody's H1s green, so don't move that into your plugin. Um, so you really have to think about, like, what kind of stuff are, are you, um, you know, you're, you're basically defining stuff that's going to happen on everyone's site. So you've got to be a little bit more careful um, with styles and stuff like that. And so then the ultimate test here, um, and we're just about to wrap things up, um, right? This should now work if I change themes, right? Theoretically, that's the whole point of the talk. So I got my fingers crossed. <laughs> I hope y'all do too. Um, and I'm just going to change themes and see what happens. So I have 2014 loaded on here as well. Let's go ahead and activate that. Refresh. And there it is. So thank you. Um, yeah, so that's for me, like when I sort of discovered that process of moving stuff out of your child theme into a plugin, it just sort of opened up this whole bigger world where it's almost like you're working on many different sites at once in a way. Um, so at this point, I guess, does anybody have any questions? That's pretty much it for the talk. Any questions about anything? Yeah. Did you put the slide back up that has the link to your slides? Yeah, absolutely. Um, That's it. Can you see that? Other questions? All right, well, nope, oh, go ahead. So, like, did your work, do you guys then create a code repository of plug -in, internal plugins you guys all create? Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what we do. Um, we kind of started out that way, and just recently we have sort of like registered a couple of them with WordPress.org. Um, so, yeah, um, it's not an easy <laughs> process if you're used to Git because you have to use the version. Um, that was a big hurdle for me. It was like a whole different um, uh, version control system that I had never used before. Um, but, yeah, we have a couple in there um, now. But I guess one of the main points about this talk is, like, you can just make your own. You can host them on GitHub if you want to share them with other people. You can host them on Bitbucket if you want them to be private, and you can have, like, free private repositories there. That's typically what we do if we're working on a plugin that's, like, not quite ready for uh, the general public to, like, see, you know, everything. Um, we'll just usually, like, put them on Bitbucket and just have this internal group of plugins. Yeah. Anybody else? Thank you, Michael. All right, thank you all.